my wife has, um, well, I guess you could call Quakerish leanings. She doesn't have belong to an organised religion, or indeed go to Quaker meetings anymore, unless she used to for a while. But uh, some of the language that she uses sometimes comes out of a kind of philosophy or a cosmology which I think Quakers would understand. And one of the ways that reveals itself, I think, is what she says to my children as they leave for school, which they did about five minutes ago, just say goodbye to them myself. When they're going down the drive of the house toward the lair in which we live, she almost always says to them, I'll hold you in the light. I'll hold you in the light. Which, as I understand it, is a kind of, uh, well, I know, I know it appears in other spiritual and religious and metaphysical traditions too, but I think that particular phrase is, uh, is very resonant to, to Quakers. And I've always thought I've always thought it was a bit silly, if I'm honest. I, should, I probably shouldn't say that, but I will. I've always raised internal eyebrows uh, when I've heard that, seeing it as a sort of, um, well, as a kind of spirituality light, really, as a, uh, uh, a, a religion without any of the difficulties associated with religious practices. Um, and I've, and I've, again, I've thought this, you know, hold you in the light phrase was part of that um, relatively superficial understanding or superficial engagement with religious and, and, and uh, superstitious practice. As an atheist myself, I could never agree with anything like that anyway. But to the extent that those practices demand acknowledgement and respect, it's, uh, it's something to do with the rigour. At least I... I can admire the rigour that some people bring to it. But it seems to me this uh, holding in the light stuff has always felt a bit super superficial and, uh, and not terribly thought through. It's, uh, it sort of smacks of a kind of gaseous, nebulous god. It hasn't got any of the complications of real gods. It's just some sort of vague force out there in the world, kind of internally illuminated. But uh, that we're making a plea to look after our children, to, to which you know, sentiment might be great, but it's just about unsatisfactory. However, having said all that, and that all sounds terribly negative, what uh, where I'm sort of going with my thinking about that is in thinking about that term. What could that term mean? I'll hold you in the light. In the in the terms that I've been talking about in these videos and that I've been writing about to do with an understanding of spatial knowledge, or spatial understanding of knowledge more accurately, in which knowledge is not understood to be just a series of facts which one can possess, but as a highly complex, albeit structured, set of experiences leading from data at one end to wisdom and being at the other, if you like, uh, in, uh, in terms of one's the extent of one's engagement and can range in size from a, the micro fact of a perception, if you like, or a date in history to a really large, encompassing sense of knowledge that one associates with spiritual practices, non duality, Advaita, divine union, those kind of things. Um, so, in that picture, and I think the word picture is significant, how can I'll hold you in the light? Come to mean anything? Well, I think what it's what what I'm sort of trying to interpret there is that it's it's a claim that the that one's knowledge of one's person, the knowledge of the loved one that you're saying goodbye to, um, isn't receding into the distance along with their body. It's just because they're diminishing in size and heading towards the horizon of your perception doesn't mean that, that your awareness of them and the complex of feelings and, and information you have about that person is similarly receding and similarly disappearing over the horizon. On the contrary, it's quite close. It's, uh, it's, it's not held, it's not simply held in some sort of illuminated space as an object is held in an illuminated space. Or I beg your pardon, it's not placed in that space outside of the orbit of one's arms. It's placed in that space in a proximity that one can hold it.
it's within that crucial distance, it's within arm's length. And the position that would be able to literally hold that person in the light. And that proximity is significant. Because proximity is significant. The the items of the world that fall within arm's length have properties and qualities that the objects of the world which are out with that distance don't have. Things that are within the orbit of our arms are the stuff that can hurt us and that can nourish us. It's the stuff that we have to pay particular attention to. It's the stuff that has extreme salience. We should always be very, very attentive to the stuff that's very close to us in a way that perhaps we can be more objective i.e. less attached to the stuff that's more distant from us. So when I think my wife is saying, I'll hold you in the light, I think what she's saying is, at least this is how I'm interpreting it, is that even though my boys are outside of a sort of visual awareness, obviously, Metaphorically, she's embracing them, even whilst they're gone. She's holding them in her arms and pressing them against against her skin, and um, and feeling the necessity and the salience of their existence in the world, and uh, not wanting to let them go.